You're currently watching a simulation of our sun undergoing uh, evolution through the ages. After several billion years, our sun is going to be a little bit different from what it's like today. And at some point, it's going to get bigger and brighter. Then, after about 5 or possibly 6 billion years from today, it's going to expand to the point where it's going to become a red supergiant. And then it will lose its outer shell and become a white dwarf. Now, in today's video, we're going to investigate something that I was wondering about myself for quite a long time. What would happen to our solar system if our sun was actually a white dwarf? If after 5 to 6 billion years, it underwent all of this evolution, lost its shell and became a white dwarf. So let's use the Universe Sandbox 2 to try to figure this out and find out what happens. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And what we're going to be using is just a regular simulation here and actually if you go into the sun and click on it and look at the age here you can unlock this little setting and change the age of the sun so what we're going to do now is we're going to advance the age of the sun in uh, billions of years so currently the age of our sun is 4.66 billion years old we're going to change this billion by billion and then look at earth and see what happens to it so after the first billion years, and actually you may want to take a look at uh, the radius of the sun as well. So we're going to change the radius here and also the luminosity of the sun as well. And because luminosity and radius are also important for us in determining how warm or how hot the earth will get as well. So let's start with 6 billion years. This is about 1.4 billion years from now. And after 6 billion years, our sun is going to be about 13% more luminous. In other words, it's going to actually send out 13% uh, more light. And it's also going to increase its radius by about 6% as well. In other words, it's going to be about 6% bigger in the sky and it's going to send a little bit more sunlight. Which means that Earth is going to get just a little bit warmer. Currently, Earth has increased its temperature and I actually should probably check this out. Uh, and Earth's average temperature increased from about 15 to 16 degrees to now it's going toward 23, possibly 24 or even higher. In other words, 1.4 or 1.5 billion years from now, Earth is going to get much, much, much hotter. Now, we of course are assuming that nothing else will change in our solar system. In other words, the orbits will stay the same and nothing major will occur to any of the planets for example there won't be any major collisions there won't be any kind of major catastrophes anywhere in the solar system and that's of course a big assumption as well because after 1.4 billion years many things could actually happen but assuming that nothing else happens the worst that will happen to our earth is that it's actually going to increase its temperature or average temperature that is by quite quite a lot currently it's still increasing now let's actually see how hot it gets and it looks like it stopped around 31 to 32 degrees Celsius. Now, remember, it used to be about 15 degrees Celsius. This, of course, means that most, if not all of the um, polar caps will melt. So there won't be any ice left anymore. As you can see, there's nothing left. And this, of course, also means that, well, first of all, Antarctica is going to become a much warmer place for us to live. So we can actually possibly uh, colonize and settle Antarctica finally. And also that the water levels will most likely rise dramatically so a lot of the continents will actually be covered with water because all of the polar ice will melt all right let's advance this by uh one more billion years so this is 2.5 billion years from now and the radius of the sun has now increased by about 11 percent. so it's about 11 percent larger than it used to be which you can see right here and uh, its luminosity has increased by 25% which means that it's now actually sending out 25% more light toward our planet which of course means that things will get even hotter now we can do this for every billion years and you'll notice that as the sun increases this in size and luminosity our earth gets warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer at some point earth will get so hot that uh, most of the life even if it was able to survive on the planet would actually struggle to survive because it would actually be really really hot here now what I want to find out if uh, if we can actually reach the point where even water starts evaporating and leaves us completely barren. But what's interesting is that after a few billion years, it's very likely that Mars will actually also warm up 
and become more habitable. We, we might actually, after a few billion years, be able to consider Mars to be a new home for us. Well, let's not uh, rush things. Let's actually increase this by one more billion years. So now the sun is 8 billion years old. It is also 17% larger than it used to be, and it releases about 39% more light or luminosity than uh, than before. And of course, surface temperature of Earth has started to increase again, and all other planets will actually receive more sunlight as well. Uh, Venus is actually going to get really hot, and within the next few billion years, Venus will most likely turn in some, into some kind of a molten and super hot object. It's very likely that it's actually going to start melting its surface to the point where it's even going to release light from the other side as well, which is going to be a pretty interesting sight to observe if we're, if we're still around in a few billion years. All right, now let's make Sun 9 billion years old. And uh, once again, Sun has increased its size and it's now about 26% larger than it used to be and is releasing 58% uh, more sunlight as well. Now, something I wanted to clarify is that uh, even now, the sun is still using its hydrogen to basically produce all of the sunlight or all of the energy. Um, in the first few billion years, or basically for the most um, life of this of any star, most stars will use their hydrogen to try to combine hydrogen into helium, which is where the most of the energy comes from. So as they combine hydrogen and create helium, they will release these massive amounts of energy. But when there's no more hydrogen left, this is when things will get a little bit more interesting. But this will not happen for another few billion years. So when it can actually keep going, we can keep advancing in the evolution of the sun. And let's take it to 10 billion years. And now, the sun is about almost 40% larger and uh, it sends out uh, almost 90% more sunlight and energy into outer space, which of course means that Earth is hot. Earth is so hot that if, if there are any human beings left at this point, they are either evolved to survive the superheat or they've possibly just sheltered themselves somewhere deep inside the Earth. And interestingly, even the Mars started to warm up a little bit, even though it doesn't really have much atmosphere on the surface, it's warming up to the point where we might even consider it to be a comfortable place to live. And let's go into the last step here, 11 billion years. All right, so here we go, 11 billion years, our sun is now 79% larger and sends out about 214% more sunlight than before. So this is a pretty big sun. Uh, if you were to look into the sky, you, uh, the sun would be twice as big. It would feel a lot more hot. It would uh, send out so much heat, as a matter of fact, that, uh, oh, looks like we might actually reach that point of boiling now. Uh, and it's very likely that this is when all of the water on the surface will start boiling away. And looks like we've reached that temperature. It's 101 degrees Celsius. It's past the boiling point. All of this beautiful water is going to start disappearing. You can see it disappear in the northern part of Australia. It's disappearing right here in Malaysia and Indonesia. It's going away forever. So this is after 11 billion years. The sun will be so large and so hot that it will very likely uh, evaporate all of the water from the surface of our planet. And this is uh, close to the point where there's almost no helium left on the inside and the sun is just really uh, getting to the point where it's about to use its helium as a main energy source. And as our planet starts losing all this water, we are coming close to the point where sun will actually change its shape as well. Now specifically in this game at least, this, uh, this particular number is something around 11.2 billion years. So I think it's like 11 and 230 billion years. And this is when, look at that, the sun becomes a white dwarf. Now, unfortunately, I'm unable to show you what exactly happens here, but what happens after 11.2 billion years is that our sun, is going to run out of all of its hydrogen and suddenly there's only helium left on the inside. And as that happens, a lot of this helium starts burning on the inside and starts being converted into carbon and oxygen. And so unfortunately in this game, it's not really well represented, but basically what happens here is this. As our sun undergoes the, its evolution, it starts burning hydrogen and all, as this hydrogen is being used up, and I'm going to slow this down a little bit just so you can see it. Uh, um, 
At some point, the hydrogen runs out completely and helium starts burning into carbon and oxygen. So helium combines into carbon and oxygen and releases massive amounts of energy. And as this occurs, there's something called helium flash when suddenly there's a huge release of energy and a huge flash from this sun that's about to undergo its evolution. Unfortunately, in this game, we don't really see it, but imagine a sudden flash and sudden release of energy, almost like a huge massive nuclear explosion from our sun that will most likely cause some damage to our planet as well. But as this happens, the part on the inside, which you don't really see right here, but on the inside right here inside the star, there's actually a carbon oxygen core that starts to move around the outer shell of the sun. It sort of just moves around on the inside as the outer shell keeps expanding and expanding. And there's a point where this outer shell reaches the... Uh, the size of about 100 radii of the sun and this is when it becomes a red giant. And just to help you visualize what's going to happen, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to place the sun right here and this is what the sun is like right now. And basically within a few million years it's going to undergo a sudden expansion. So first it's going to turn into this after 6.3 billion years from now and then it's going to just grow larger and larger and larger right before it becomes a white dwarf it's going to be about 100 times the radius it currently is so in other words it's going to be so large that a lot of this outer shell is possibly going to cover planets like mercury and venus and earth is actually going to be really 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 close to the surface of this shell but then on the inside, it's going to have this carbon and oxygen core that's just going to kind of swim around on the inside. And most of the outer shell is no longer going to be producing any energy. And as a matter of fact, it's going to just kind of expand and expand and expand until it sort of turns into what's called a planetary nova. It's actually going to just kind of dissipate into the outer space. And I think the most uh, common example of this so-called planetary nebula is right here. This is called a crab nebula. This was actually something that people or humanity has witnessed in the year of, uh, I think it was 1053, when they actually saw this in the sky. They saw the explosion that we now see as this beautiful crab nebula. But since unfortunately we cannot simulate planetary nebula or planetary nova in this game, we're going to have to just uh, use our imagination and so what happens to our sun or our star afterwards is that it turns into a white dwarf. So the carbon and oxygen core that remains after the planetary nebula is what stays there um, in the end. Now let's actually go back to the original simulation and try to see what this is going to look like. So right here, I'm actually just going to enter, uh, let's just say 12 billion years for the main star and it's, it undergoes its nova. And now we're going to turn on realistic mode just to turn it into a white dwarf. Now, first of all, you'll notice that as soon as it loses its outer shell, uh, it just has about 54% of its mass left. So suddenly the planets are no longer orbiting in the same orbit. So many of the planets will possibly change their orbit, become more elliptical. Um, it's very unlikely that any of them will actually escape into the outer solar system uh, or basically escape our solar system at all, but they will very likely change their orbits. So uh, Earth, which was actually prior to this extremely hot, will now become really cold. It will have a very elliptical orbit where it goes into the outer solar system for a while and then comes back relatively close to the sun but this sun is no longer uh, it's no longer as large and it's no longer as luminous as it used to be as a matter of fact it's only about the size of earth the white dwarf that will be the leftover sun is actually really tiny. So here is the comparison of this white dwarf to our Earth. It's it's basically pretty much the same size, just a little bit larger maybe. In other words, planets like Jupiter are actually much larger than this uh, white dwarf. And uh, even though this is a very dense object, even though it still has quite a large mass, it just doesn't produce enough heat and enough uh, energy to support any kind of uh, life on any of these planets. But interestingly, the planets that used to be really hot, like Mercury and Venus, might now be actually relatively cool. So for example, Venus right here, you'll see that it's decreasing its temperatures to something more manageable. And uh, Mercury is, oh no, it's Mercury is still relatively hot, but not as hot as it used to be. 
Now we actually have a, a white dwarf very close to us right now, and this this white dwarf is uh, I mentioned it in a previous video. It's a star code Sirius B. Sirius B is about 8.6 light years away from our planet, and it's a white dwarf that uh, we can actually study with our telescopes today. And what we know about white dwarfs is that well, first of all, these are essentially the final stages of many stars in our galaxy and in our universe. Many stars will become white dwarfs, and they will stay white wars for a very 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 long time as a matter of fact when a star undergoes a planetary nova and when it doesn't become a black hole or a neutron star, if it stays a white dwarf, it's going to stay a white dwarf for billions and billions and billions of years. None of these stars that have undergone this have become anything else yet because it takes a much longer time than anything else for them to transition into their next stage. And next stage for these little guys is going to be a black dwarf. Now I'm going to show you what a black dwarf looks like in a few minutes, but let's just see how our Earth and other planets are doing here. So as you can see, Mercury has assumed a more elliptical orbit, Venus uh, did as well, and so did Mars, and so did Earth. But Earth is of course a frozen ball of ice now. And this is what Earth looks like. The temperature on the surface is currently minus 106 degrees Celsius. It's colder than what Mars used to be before we started all of this. But it looks like Venus doesn't actually want to cool down. Even in the highest uh, part of its orbit, it's still relatively hot because of its pressure and because of the amount of atmosphere that it has on the surface and because of basically a really because of its humongous greenhouse effect, its temperature currently is 130 degrees Celsius. In other words, it is still a very, very hot object that we'll probably not really be able to survive on. So it looks like after our sun becomes a white dwarf, none of the planets will be able to support any life anymore, at least not our life. Unless we change so much that we can actually survive these huge temperatures or uh, are able to actually live on planets like Saturn and Jupiter, we will most likely not be able to live in the solar system anymore. Because Mercury is very hot, Venus is very hot, Mars and Earth are ridiculously cold, and the other planets will have such a different orbit by this point that uh, they will very likely be very unstable or, or possibly even smack into each other. But Nevertheless, it was kind of fun to see what happens when uh, our sun actually becomes a white dwarf. Now, so as I mentioned before, none of these stars in our universe are, are black dwarfs yet, because even the oldest star that has become a white dwarf is still a white dwarf. For a star to become black dwarf, it needs to actually wait for up to 40 or possibly even 50 billion years. And our universe is only 13.8 billion years old, so in other words, uh, even the oldest star that has become a white dwarf is still in this state today, but basically all of these little stars will cool down at some point and become this. And here we go, this is what uh, a black dwarf would look like. It's essentially a very, very dark star that has um, really nothing on its surface. You can't even see it probably because it's just so dark and gloomy and doesn't really release any more heat. And, and at some point it will just kind of evaporate into nothingness. But unfortunately for us, we'll never really see this because it will take tens if not hundreds of billions of years for this to happen. So even though we kind of theoretically know that these stars might exist one day, it's very unlikely that we'll er ever witness them. Well, anyway, let's just go back to our planet and appreciate it for what it is, because if it was a little bit older or if our uh, solar system was a little bit different, the temperature here would be unbearable. And if our sun had been actually 11 billion years old right now and a little bit older than it currently is, the, the heat from the sun would most likely evaporate all of the water on the surface of our planet. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this little simulation and this little exploration of what would happen to our sun and what will happen to our sun in the future. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about stellar evolution and how it affects different stars in the universe. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends, share it with your family and show it to your teachers and or your students. Thank you so much for watching and game you later guys, bye bye. And don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't.